Today, we're gonna make a little bit of progress with the box collection that's been sitting in my garage, and we're gonna start a two-part video series installing my Tuffy security deck, and then once that's installed and securing my cargo area, we're gonna install my ARB twin pump compressor, which has been sitting on my shelf for quite a while, and is definitely a mod that I wanna get installed on the jail. I wanna make sure I've got my cargo area secure because I don't want this air compressor sitting there. So we're gonna get this box behind me uh, opened up today and we're gonna pull the Tuffy security deck out. We're gonna go through it and then we're gonna do the installation. Now I've had the Tuffy security deck in my JK for a few years now and I really do enjoy the security of knowing that all my cargo, my recovery gear, my air compressor and anything else that I pop into there isn't going to get just picked up and taken out of the back of my Jeep should somebody walk by and decide they want it. So the thing with this security deck is it encloses your entire cargo area, including the space behind your seats. So even if you put your seat down, there is no way to get into the cargo area, which is great. This looks like it may be the behind the seat panel on the inside. And when you order this, they have two versions, one for the larger subwoofer and one with, I don't know if it's no subwoofer or a smaller subwoofer, but I do have the 12 inch subwoofer um, audio upgrade in my JL. So this will be the passenger side panel, which has a nice hole for the uh, subwoofer. Got some instructions on how to install this. And yeah, this will be the driver's side. We've got a cutout here for the 12 volt connector so that you can still use that uh, inside your cargo area. And then we've got the lid here. Okay, so after going through all of the hardware that was included with this and checking it against the instructions, I can't even start the first step because I am missing all six of these carriage bolts. So these are 5 16ths by 3 quarter inch and I need them for uh, basically connecting the side panels with these knobs and it's pretty much the first step for installing these brackets. So I'm gonna have to run out to Home Depot because I wanna get this done today and hopefully they have some carriage bolts that fit. So check your parts before you get started and Tuffy, that's really annoying. After a quick trip to Home Depot and $10 later, we picked up 10 stainless steel carriage bolts that we're gonna need to assemble this. Maybe I should send the receipt to Tuffy? I don't know, whatever, 10 bucks but check your hardware before you start your installations. I then bolted the brackets to each side panel of the uh, security enclosure. I also bolted on, which is a new feature for the JLs, which my JK doesn't have, and that is a support arm that is going to then allow for the lid to be held up when you wanna open it and get into the cargo area or have better access to it. My JK doesn't have that and it's a little bit annoying. Then I had to unbolt the two middle tie down anchors on in the bed or in the cargo area of my Wrangler. And we're going to reuse those bolt holes to then bolt down the two brackets that are gonna hold the two side panels on. So next we used the thumb screws to then connect the rear panel on in, which basically goes right behind your rear seats. There's four carriage bolts, which also cannot be removed from outside of the enclosure and four thumb screws. So you could easily just take these four thumb screws off and remove that panel. And you could then have it pass through into the passenger area of your Jeep. Now, I suppose you could run this without the front panel, but I don't think the sides would be as secure as it does require the uh, rear panel to hold the sides and keep them in place. But uh, I suppose if you needed to carry some cargo around and uh, you need to take this front panel off and the roof or the top panel, uh, it's pretty easy and quick, and then you can put your larger cargo in. With all three of the sides installed, we can now bring in the top. Now the instructions say to bring it in from the inside or the passenger compartment. Since I don't have the roof on, all my soft tops off, it's pretty easy to maneuver. So I just brought it in over top of the three sides, and then you hook the rear nylon wheels into the back, pull it forward, drop it down into the front nylon wheel slot, and then you push it back. Now, when you close the tailgate, you can't pull the security deck or the top or the lid of it forward and there you can't open it. Now, when you lock your Jeep, the rear tailgate does lock and if you didn't know, 
all your lock switches disable when you've locked it with the key fob. So there's not really any way to get into this once you've locked your vehicle and locked your tailgate. All right, so overall the installation is pretty straightforward. You don't really need anything other than some basic hand tools and the ability to turn those thumb screws. The fit and finish, I would give it, uh, you know, probably like a seven or an eight. It is pretty good, but some of the trim panel or some of the trim guards that are on the sharp metal edges do come off if you grab the wrong spot or grab that lid by the trim panel rather than the metal. The other thing that I did notice was that the bar that comes up that holds the lid, well, if you have something plugged into that 12 volt that extends past through the hole into the secure cargo area, it's going to uh, get in the way of that arm going up and down. So if I want to use my fridge, I got to unplug it, pull that thing up, plug it back in. Now I can open my fridge, close my fridge, unplug my fridge, put the arm back down, close the lid, plug my fridge back in. So that is a bit of an annoyance. Uh, I feel like you probably could have put that bar over on the other side or had a little pin on the side of the wall to hold it up above where the 12 volt is. Bit of a design consideration uh, that seems like it should have come out in testing. But anyways, overall, fairly good. I do find the sides a little bit wobbly when you have it open. And so getting the rollers into the slots that hold it in place uh, takes a little bit of jiggling because the sides are a bit wobbly. It does provide a very secure rear cargo area. And you can still get quite a bit of stuff in there. I do have my Dometic CFX 28 quart fridge that does fit in. There's about 17 inches of total clearance underneath the deck, but probably closer to 15 if you don't want to open the deck in order to get your cargo in. The difference from the JK to the JL is there is a higher cargo ceiling because rather than dropping it down over the front lip like they do on the JK, the JL one actually pops up from where the rear tailgate is. So it allows you a higher cargo height in the cargo area and now I can actually get my fridge in. I can't get my 28 quart Dometic in my JK. I usually put it on top. It would have been nice if there were some tie downs already installed and maybe a rubber mat that comes with this. For the price, you can order a rubber mat or like I did on the JK, I just ordered some checker plate rubber and put it on top or you could bed line it. It does get scratched fairly easily. It doesn't take much to scratch this. And if you want a nice clean looking top, it's going to scratch up easy. I would recommend buying some rubber to put on it. And there's no tie downs. There's no holes for tie downs. On the JK one, I did install some tie downs in the lid and uh, I use that all the time for cargo. So I'll probably do the same. Probably just order a sheet of rubber off of Amazon, uh, use some adhesive, drill a couple holes through it, add some tie downs. And now I could probably, I'll probably put my fridge on top uh, when I'm out and use the lower area for storing my tools and other equipment that is a little bit harder to, or a little bit easier to steal because of how portable it is. The other issue is that I won't be able to get my rugged ridge floor mat in. So I think I might just trim that down so that it matches the perimeter of the actual security enclosure because I do like having that rubber floor in there as well. I don't like the carpet because just too much crap gets in it. If you want to see the second part of this, which is going to be adding my ARB twin compressor to the tailgate now that we can secure it and when it's closed, it will reside within the security enclosure. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because that is going to be the next video. We're going to finish that up. Thanks so much for watching. As always, leave a like. If you have any questions about the install or my Jeep or anything I might know the answer to, leave it down below. I'll do my best to answer and I'll see you guys next time in the next upload.